Hey Lions fans, I'm Vincent Menino. I'm going to host the Lion Digital Network Coaches Show this year. Uh, as school starts, we wanted to release a coaches show with all of our coaches here at Fried Hardeman, recapping last year and looking ahead to this year. We hope you enjoy. Uh, all right, welcome into the coaches show. Um, over the uh, coming weeks, we're going to try to release videos uh, with uh, interviews with all the coaches here at Fried Hardeman, um, and uh, hopefully. Uh, these will be a little shorter, a little quicker, and, and give you some insight onto uh, a little bit behind the scenes, what goes on in the summer uh, uh, for the coaches here. So we're going to start off with Coach Humphrey, uh, the Freed Hardman softball coach. Correct. And uh, Coach, I wanted to um, give you the opportunity, and this is the first time you've had a public forum since uh, we hosted the national tournament. Uh, Correct. So just talk about that, that experience for your girls. Well, it was uh, another great experience from the, you know, we, had, we hosted the open round two years ago when we went to the World Series. And then we were able to have the season that kept us in the running to host again this, this past season. Uh, anytime you play at your home field, it's a blessing. And then having the uh, crowd support, the fan support, uh, alumni coming back was an awesome experience. Uh, we <laughs> unfortunately, we didn't come out on top this time to go to World Series, but we had a great, uh, great showing. Uh, Losing in the I think the ninth or tenth inning, bottom of the ninth or tenth inning to to not uh, uh, move on to the World Series. So to a very good Central Methodist team that went on and and represented very well at the World Series. So you know you, you want to go every year. It doesn't always work out like that. But at least we've had the opportunity in our backyard to uh, to uh, put on a show and and uh, and see what we could you know come up with. How much does our the quality of our field play into getting to host? Oh, it has a lot to do with it. We have a lot of answers that we have to, or questions we have to answer as far as seating, uh, broadcasting, uh, facilities for practice, warm-up, uh, fan, you know, interaction, concessions, uh, parking. I mean, there's a lot of different factors that we uh, have to answer before we even put a bid in. And the fact that we put a bid in two years ago and was able to get that uh, bid, we felt pretty good about it because we had to, you know, we could almost copy it and paste it to the to the yeah. new application, but. Uh, uh, it makes a lot of difference, and the fact that two years ago our our, uh, our field was voted the top NAI, NAI field in the nation was uh, also a good selling point. So, yeah, so, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, well, this year you're transitioning after over 20 years of doing two sports here at Fried Hardman to just doing one. Um, mm -hmm. What uh, what's going to be the biggest benefit to the players, the softball players, in having just one dedicated coach? I think that it's going to be really weird for me, first of all, because usually at this time I'm getting ready for preseason volleyball. Uh, I'm, I've told uh, Kalen and others that I'm excited because I will be there in the fall uh, preparing for the season as opposed to someone else doing my leg work for me. Uh, I think you will see a, I think you will see an increase of production, hopefully, because I'm, I'm there every day interacting. Uh, before I had assistant coaches for the first 20 years that I coached, uh, we would have to do something, um, practice volleyball in the afternoon since we were in season, and I'd have to do something at that evening or nighttime for the softball team. So this is going to be a lot more one-on-one -on -one with me uh, in the fall, which I'm, like I said, I'm excited with. I'll be more involved with the pitchers as opposed to just giving them instructions and some guidance on what I need them to work on. I'll be there every day to you know, watch them perform and, and uh, critique, I guess. So. Yeah, that off-season should be much stronger this time. You know, it is, uh, and I think it will help the volleyball program as well because even when I was coaching volleyball in the fall, I would have to leave them in January and go to softball, and they would have a very tough off season as far as your strength and conditioning. And, you know, volleyball is one of those sports where you have to kind of keep your hands on the ball, rhythm type stuff. And so uh, now that Amanda has taken over volleyball, I think that will be better for volleyball as well. So, you know, a lot of things, a lot of things factor in this, but I think the one on one, uh, relationships, instruction, uh, I hate to say criticism, but critiquing, you know, what, where yeah, we need what coaches to do. Yeah. Well, we look at it, fall ball is kind of like a spring train for baseball. You know, right. we're seeing where we are, where we need to improve, what we got to do to be ready for, you know, we start playing early February. And so when we come back from Christmas, we better be somewhat have an idea of where we're going to be and what we need to be uh, working on. So, yeah. Um, talk about a little bit of the differences, um, strategy-wise between baseball and softball. I'm a big baseball fan, um, uh, grew up watching it, and 
seems like to me watching softball, sometimes getting a runner to second base with less than two outs isn't quite good enough. Sometimes you make a decision to, to bunt somebody over to third and give up that extra out, whereas a baseball game that people traditionally coaches wouldn't make that decision. Correct, uh, and, and I think it varies. Uh, I don't know. I've looked for you know different uh, playbooks for softball and stuff. I think every coach has different uh, uh, opinions, philosophies. Uh, sometimes it depends on your personnel as far as your speed on the bases. You know, if you think you can steal a base here or, or uh, take two on a hit or, or whatever. You know, this year our, our teams will be a lot different from last year's team. So uh, for me, I think it all, a lot of it depends on where we are in our lineup, you know, uh, how, how we're hitting. If my number three, if I have a Sophie Dunham in a three hole and I have a girl on second base, I feel pretty good because Sophie is batting above average and player of the year. and, and you know, I feel pretty good about scoring her from second base. Okay, if we are middle lineup back, where we have someone who may not have the percentage, the batting average, then we may have to move them over and and hope for that one hit that's going to get us uh, a run late in the lineup. So, uh, I, I also believe it makes a, a difference on who you're playing. You know, if I'm playing a University of Cumberland, and I know it's going to be a, a tight ball game, a one-run ball game, two-run ball game. Anytime I can get that extra run, you know, what I call an insurance run, uh, I'm probably going to do it. But uh, it just takes a little bit of pressure off of us late, you know, sixth, seventh inning. Uh, sometimes we're just trying to manufacture a run, you know, if it's 0-0, zero, zero, if you've got two studs in the circle that are throwing a, a great game and that one run is going to make a difference, you know, we're going to do whatever we can. Uh, yeah. So I think it varies from coach to coach. I don't think there's a, a playbook that you can just look at, you know, uh, I think you, you ask about the difference between uh, baseball and softball, and I've, I was, I've grown up being a baseball guy. My whole family played baseball from my dad down to my son, and so we're a baseball family, and I'm still going to watch it on TV and all that stuff, but I love softball because it's faster, okay? The pace of the game is faster, and a lot of that has to do with the size of the field, okay? Okay. So, you know, a base hit in baseball might score somebody from second base, but a base hit in softball may not score somebody from second base. So it really depends on... Uh, a lot of situations. And sometimes it, it's a gamble and you just have to go from the gut. And so, yeah. I, again, if you know or some literature where it says, you know, the <laughs> strategies, let me know. Even though I've been coaching in a softball for a long time, uh, you try to learn something every, every year. And I think it goes back to what I said first. It really depends on your, your clientele. If you've got someone who you feel like can do a, a good push bunt or something in a certain situation where we might go first and third. You know, she, might, she may get on first, now we're first and third. We can steal that runner second. Now we're second and third with uh, you know, one out. So it really varies. It really does. Well, transition that into, um, you know, you started mentioning the differences in lineups and how you're going to be different this year. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about how recruiting has gone this summer, what next year is looking like. Uh, I know we lost a lot more this time than from yeah. last year to this past year. Yeah, we did. We, uh, we graduated uh, quite a few girls, and I think we're past the COVID year now to where okay. that fifth year <laughs> super senior whatever you want to people call people aren't it. getting just free years all yeah, the place. exactly <laughs> uh you know it, it that really you know people don't realize that that really affects your game because you have a kid who you may recruit who can come in and play right away but she's playing behind a senior who's going through their covid year and been there for three years so it's hard for her to beat her out now yeah. you got a, a really good player on the bench because there's not a position for her so it really does make a difference in that uh, I'm excited about this team because it's going to be a different look. We have relied on the power game as far as home runs over the years. You know, when you have a Kennedy Harris leading off and she's leading the team and, and career uh, at school and home runs, you know, I have seen her at least twice first pitch of the game hit a home run. So you're already 1-0 to zero at the, at, after one yeah. pitch. We're not going to be that team this year. We're going to have two or three girls that can hit a home run for us. But I feel like we're going to go – First to third, a lot of a lot of speed. Uh, we will probably will have at least four, maybe five left-handed batters in the in the, the lineup this year, which is something that we've never had at Freed Harmon since I've been here. So I think it'll be a different look. Uh, we're going to be solid defensively, and then uh, of course we got both of our senior yeah pitchers both back. pitchers coming back both pitchers yeah. coming back, and then we've added two more pitchers, and so you know. Uh, I feel, I feel good about it. Like I say, it's just going to be a different look. We're not going to be sitting back there waiting for that girl to hit a home run as opposed to we are going to get that girl to second base. We may have to move her over to third base at this yeah, time. Yeah. Uh, we may have the girl who can go 
uh, from first to third on a bunt. You know, it just it really depends. I think we're going to be a, a faster team and maybe a little less power this year. Okay. Yeah. But we're recruiting going well. I'm sorry. Recruiting's going <laughs> well. Uh, we're bringing in, you know, we lost seven girls. Uh, five to graduation, two just change uh, change of, uh, you know, majors and things like that who've transferred to different schools uh, or unhappy with our program, whatever. And so uh, it, it, we, we had a good year. I, I feel really good. We've got two more offers on the plate on the table right now. We just haven't heard back from yet. So okay. uh, if they're listening, I hope they hurry up and <laughs> make a decision because uh, we'd like to go ahead and get them in class and get them in a dorm and all that stuff. But uh, we are still still recruiting. Well, talk about the advantages of left-handers. You said that you haven't had left-handed hitters. What's the t well, tell everybody why that's important? Typically, your left-handed batter is going to be your 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 speedster. I've never really had a true what I call a left-handed power hitter. You know, you you see. Now, baseball, you got a Bellinger who's hitting for the Cubs right now who's hot and a left-handed batter in baseball who's just you know going yard almost mm -hmm. every game. But in, for, for us in softball, we haven't had that. Uh, we're, we're mostly speed. And so we're going to uh, – the slapper, we're going to have two or three slappers in the lineup this year. Uh, that extra two steps between home and first makes a lot of difference on the speed of the game. Um, so that ground ball to third might be a base hit. It might be a base hit. You know, uh, I've had girls who can, you know, get down the line pretty good, and, and that left-handed box gives them at least two or three more extra steps to yeah. get closer to the target. And so, um, I, you know, I told you earlier I'm excited. I am. I'm excited about what we have and, and, uh, and what we're going to put on the field this year, really. Okay. All right, well, I really appreciate it, Coach. Thank you. Um, before we wrap up, I want to do this to everybody. I have no prize. This is just going to be a fun competition okay. between all the coaches that, that do this. I didn't study. Um, all right, we're going to give you 60 seconds to name as many NAIA schools not in the Mid-South Conference as you can. Okay, when all do right? I start? Uh, ready, go. Okay, you got Central Baptist. You have Columbia, Harris Stowe, uh, Stevens, um, School of Pharmacy, uh, Park, uh, Georgia Gwinnett, uh, Central Methodist. Um, uh, can you think right now? <laughs> That's the time we're giving. Huh? You <laughs> got eight. I get two more. Uh, Blue Mountain, um, Bethel, or is it about the Faulkner, Mobile? Uh, huh? Thirty. Thirty. Okay. Um, Southeastern, uh, down in Florida, um, Warner, Weber. Uh, I said Georgia went in already. Um, I said Columbia, uh, William Woods. Um, I don't know. That's good. You got 14, I think. That's good. Well, A lot of the old AMC schools. Yeah, four, too. 14 is my lucky number. <laughs> okay. my, uh, all my kids have wore, wore the jersey, plus my wife has wore the jersey 14, so I guess it's meant to be. Okay. So. Hey, Lions fans, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, toggle that notifications bell to all so you don't miss any new videos. Uh, remember, you can always see all of our updates and news at gofhulions.com. And also remember to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook.